Um, let me play a little clip uh, from yesterday. This is uh, First Gentleman Dan Mulhern and I just sort of reviewing the, um, the possibilities in the primary. And I said to him, let me just, uh, Mr. First Gentleman, give you a name and you give me your knee-jerk reaction. Here's what he said. Okay. Here we go. Mike Bouchard. Sheriff. <laughs> Very crafty. Rick Snyder. <laughs> Tough nerd? I don't think okay. so. Um, Mike Cox. Mm, mean. Pete Hookstra. Uh, unique. Andy Dillon. Cerebral. Verge Bernero. Passionate. Okay. You know what? I bet you if you asked every one of those candidates, with the possible exception of Mike Cox, who you said was mean, uh, to um, label themselves, those are probably the marketing names that they would have gone with, right? Uh, yeah, maybe. Andy Dillon doesn't. Andy Dillon doesn't mind being considered cerebral, is what I said to him there, and he tended to agree with me. He went on to say in the rest of that audio that uh, he didn't feel there was a real hero among any of the primary candidates. That's why the undecideds are, are so high on the Democratic side, and that's why there seems to be almost a dead heat uh, on the uh, Republican side. You know, I think that's an interesting observation. I, mean, I, I certainly wouldn't disagree with his one-word assessments. I think it's interesting at how careful he was when he labeled Pete Hoekstra as unique, mm -hmm. uh, because that's that's not necessarily. I mean, to me, the the Mike Bouchard as sheriff is a really safe one. Yeah. Uh, Mike Cox's mean is probably an accurate one. Uh, I'm not sure I would have co come up with unique myself in terms of Pete Hoekstra, but but it's a. a a safe assessment in case Pete Hoekstra ends up being governor of the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it, you're, you're right. There, there's not a hero among them yet. And, and, you know, they have not invested tons of money in advertising. Mike Cox certainly has the most ads running. This is not anywhere near what we saw during the um, uh, DeVos campaign, for example, uh, four years ago. I was talking with... Uh, one of the general managers uh, of a TV station here in Lansing yesterday, and they said, yeah, the ad revenue just ain't where it was four years ago. I was very curious to get your opinion on what went on yesterday with uh, U.S. Representative Charlie Rangel and Luke Russert from NBC. I don't know if you saw this or not. Oh, tell me. Yeah, you'll like this. Uh, Luke Russert, who you know is the son of the late Tim Russert, who was just a, an icon at NBC, and now Luke uh, delivered his father's eulogy and has been following in his father's footsteps as a reporter at, at, at NBC. And so he got a chance in the hallway yesterday to question Charlie Rangel about the ethics problems that he's having, and he asked Charlie Rangel if he feared he might lose his job. Here's how Charlie Rangel reacted. Just trying to make coffee. What job? The one I got? Yeah. I mean, it was presented really serious how do, you think, how do you think I got my job? I was elected, right? How do you think I lose it? Well, there's two ways. You can lose it by your colleague voted you out of here because of ethics violations, or if your constituents did not what buy the station are you from? NBC. MSNBC. Why are you young? I guess you do need to make a name for yourself, but basically, you know it's a dumb question, and I'm not going to respond. Mr. Mr. Rangel, will you address What's that got to do with it? It's a dumb question. If you, if you the allegations um, are sir, made by some sir, people. You, you, you yes. not filed tax. You not filed tax on properties in the Dominican Republic. It doesn't, allegedly, it doesn't if that comes sound to be true, like, it does doesn't, that not it doesn't a really problem? sound like NBC asking these dumb questions. But it just shows what has really happened to a channel that did have some respect. So it was kind of muddled there, but you could hear that he didn't like the question. He said, "Are you just trying to make copy? Where are you from?" You're young, you're trying to make a name for yourself, which is kind of ironic because Russert is his last name. He's already got the name. And then he says, this doesn't sound like NBC asking these dumb questions. It shows what happened to a channel that, uh, that used to have respect. Ooh, now, if, that, if that was your client, he clearly didn't want to answer the question. He says, how do you think I got my job? I got elected, and how do you think I'd lose it? And young Russert said, well, you could be. You could have it taken away from you for ethics violations, or you could be voted out. Then he got even madder, and he said, that's a dumb question. Oh, my gosh. Number one, people are awful 
thin skin these days, especially politicians who are supposed to have the toughest skin around. Uh, gosh, you know, that's the kind of thing that um, somebody like me in a position like mine would say, what Representative Rangel meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> he took after a young reporter and said that, you know, you, those are dumb questions. That doesn't sound like NBC asking those questions. You know, that's just not a classy response all the way around. Um, politicians, I mean, really, frankly, anyone should be aware that uh, anything you say or do is uh, subject to, at a minimum, a, a bite on YouTube. So you should always be so careful about how you react and respond to uh, anyone's questions. And this is just like, wow. Right. Yeah, it looks like the old guy beating up the young guy and taking after him and doing anything he can to dodge the answer. It was a very simple question. Uh, <laughs> that's what Kelly Rossman does. She prepares you, if you're a candidate or an issues management person, to answer the question in a, in a sincere and direct way, and you don't end up on YouTube like Charlie Rangel did.